Hey, welcome back to Diabolic Shrimp, the least professional talk show on the internet. I'm your host, best-selling author and comic creator, Josh Grant. And uh, today, for our special guest, uh, I'm actually so thrilled uh, to get to talk to Kevin Prasad. Uh, Kevin Prasad, uh, uh, he's he's a childhood friend of mine. We were friends all through uh, through high school. Uh, he, he just so happens to be the very first person i ever published a comic with uh he and i published uh, through our school newspaper back in the day i was trying to hunt down those those papers i have them buried away somewhere i couldn't find them i was going to show them to you just because i think it's so cool uh when we were in high school we were even talking about having a talk show together we wanted to do a talk show on uh i think even on the school news or something and uh uh so it's actually really fun to get them on uh our talk show here so um for those of you that stumbled on this channel Diabolic Shrimp, we interview interesting and famous people from around the world. Uh, we're a very interactive live show. So if you're watching this live, uh, please do comment over there in the live chat or ask Kevin a question if you have it or react to art. I always love uh, just uh, honoring you and, and bringing you up here and letting you put him in the hot seat. It's a lot of fun. Um, uh, and so please do uh, comment over there. Uh, just uh, uh, before we get into Kevin, just uh, just really quick uh, special announcement. Uh, another zombie apocalypse is my upcoming comic. Uh, it's a, it's all about a bunch of different zombie apocalypse. It's a different take on the zombie apocalypse. But in the next uh, few months, I'll be announcing a chance for you to be drawn into the comic. So if you want to be drawn as a zombie in a zombie comic, uh, stay tuned to Diabolic Shrimp. Uh, we'll definitely love to get you in there. Uh, I know many of you are artists. We're going to talk all about art because uh, uh, Kevin is a gifted artist. And so... We're going to talk a lot about art today. Uh, so if you're an author and you have an, like an amazing cover on your book, Diabolic Shrimp on uh, DiabolicShrimp.com is the website that this is attached to. Uh, uh, we, we host a, a an award ceremony every year, a live award ceremony. It's like the Oscars, but bigger. And, uh, and so we, we do uh, the Shrimpy Awards, the smallest award on the internet. And uh, we do a paid award, a cash prize award for a cover contest. So And it's uh, it's free to enter into the cover contest. So, so please do check that out on Diabolic shrimp but i want to focus today though on kevin prasad uh, uh my my good friend but also an incredible artist um just a bit about him before i bring him on kevin prasad is a local colorado springs artist spoken word artist educator and activist having moved to colorado from the bronx kevin has made himself a prominent member of the colorado springs arts community kevin is has always found him, himself most connected through expression Seeing the lack of brown art, he has created a space for himself and others to thrive. He also boasts the Cottonwood Center for the Arts, as they, Kevin included, bring change to the Colorado Springs art space and get the younger community involved. High art needs a drastic change, and Kevin is thrilled to be a part of that change. Prasad states, the art scene in Colorado can flourish if we allow it and not stifle young voices. We need to be more conscious of the art we surround ourselves with. So not only a, a gifted artist, but but someone who believes in change and, and uh, representing different voices. Uh, let's bring them on. Kevin, welcome to Diabolic Shrimp. Hi, thanks for having me, Josh. It's oh, so I I am just so thrilled to to get you on here, Kevin. Uh, I'm just so ha I haven't I don't think I've seen you since since high school actually. And so it's just so great to to just personally get you on here. But it's it's just uh, such a pleasure to get to talk about your work. I can already see some of your work in the background there. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, th those photos though over here. That's uh, Rachel <laughs> Riley. She's a she's a local photographer. She's she's brilliant. She's brilliant. She's great. Um, but yeah, no, this is I'm in my studio currently, so. <clears throat> it's smelly and full of paint. And it's just a mess. It's a mess, really. It's okay. I'm in my studio, and it's 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 just full of papers. It's not nearly as cool. But uh, well, Kevin, it's it's, it's 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 so great to to have you on here. Uh, uh, I always think a great way to introduce people is through show and tell. Uh, did you happen to bring us anything for show and tell? I don't, I don't think I reminded you. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I do. I have something. It's uh, I I this was outside of my door. Um, it's a. Uh, <laughs> It's a it's a turtle. Okay. Hand? I don't know. I'm I'm not sure what this is, but it was outside my door, and I'm gonna use it for for everything now. Uh, very uh, 
I, I think uh, that might be some kind of you. some kind of threat or something. I'm I'm, a, I'm worried. <laughs> a witch brought me a gift, and I'm gonna allow it. That's what All I'm. All right, there we go. I'm doing. I'll take it. <laughs> well, Kevin, it's 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 great to have you on. It's great to uh. So uh, let's let's dive in just a bit. Um, uh, I've always known you to be an artist. Uh, like uh, uh Kevin and I did a, a comic called uh, like. Uh, Philip Kincaid, Man of Destruction. We we published it in our high school newspaper. It was, it, uh, we thought it was funny. I think it's still funny. It had these like this detective, and it had like they got turned into goats at one point, and they battled yep. with Doctor Doctor Crab Face. He had like a crab claw for an eye and an eye patch for the other <laughs> eye, and uh, uh, it was it was pretty epic. And so I, but I've always known you to be a fantastic artist. Uh, Nimbus the space whale as well. We we drew a whale that as it, it would fight intergalactic crime. It would uh, like accelerate to light speed. <laughs> So we, I wish we I could show this to you. <laughs> we weren't on drugs back then either. No, we were, we were very, definitely not. I don't know. We were just very creative kids. Yeah. So. <laughs> and uh, uh, but yeah, like he's he's definitely um, um, definitely definitely uh, uh, of incredibly creative person you are. And so I've always known you to be an Appreciate artist. You. But what inspired what inspired your love of art? Like why did you uh, uh, why do you why did you even get into art in the first place? cartoons so like what what cartoons cartoons and comic books uh absolutely um bugs bunny i i believe i am bugs bunny um, <laughs> i believe it yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh and uh so i just catch myself drawing pictures ninja turtles power rangers i was drawing everything um <laughs> you won't be drawing ninja turtles anymore now that you like have a dead turtle hand on a stick apparently that someone's giving you <laughs> Maybe maybe it's a sign. Maybe you need to start drawing Ninja Turtles now. I still draw Ninja Turtles. I'm yes. Not, yeah, I still draw Ninja Turtles. Um, <laughs> uh, but it, 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 honestly, I think it came from a, uh, from a way to communicate. Um, you know, with my parents being immigrants and just trying to talk to people and everyone around me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that's something you don't know. My grandfather uh, was disfigured. Oh, no, you do know this because I did a portrait in high school. Um, oh, I, don't think, I don't think I've yeah. ever seen that. So. Uh, so he 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 was disfigured, and then my grandmother lost her uh, memory when she was young. So uh -huh. uh, not when she was young, when I was young. Uh huh. And the guy who was raising us, uh, he was deaf. So communication was a very big thing for me. Um, so I think creating and drawing kind of helped helped me cope in that aspect, you know. Um, and then moving from the Bronx to Colorado as well. I didn't have too many friends, uh, nobody really to relate to other than some cousins, um, but they were older. So, um, so I, I leaned hard into art and schoolwork. You know, you got to get straight A's children. <laughs> well, good. Well, I was like, good on you for like, uh, 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 being able to communicate through art. I think, uh, I think through my art, through, through writing, I I'm, I'm getting worse at communicating. <laughs> I think there's even less commas than <laughs> I, I, I get. It. I get. It. <laughs> I was like, I'm not sure I'm, get I'm getting better. Well, are right, so so you were inspired like uh, uh, not only it's like I, I love I love that combination. It's just like a uh, I I feel actually very similar. I feel feel very connected with you on that. It's like a uh, just this like you know whatever you were interested in the, at the time, and then also wanting to communicate something you know kind of deeper. So uh, how would you say your art chain has changed over the years though? Um, it's changed in, in maturity with my maturity. Uh, it's always been, um, uh, a way to, to, uh, grasp identity, um, or at least within myself. Uh -huh. And now that I'm, I'm older and I'm a little bit more, uh, uh, practiced, uh, the techniques are down, the, the, the skills are down. I am trying to play more with ideas. So, so it has changed in that uh, it has matured with me and with everything that I do within the community and how I want to help the community, the art reflects that. I have a painting just outside and in the heart space, it says Attica. I don't know if you know anything about Attica. Mm -hmm. Attica was uh, is a prison in New okay. York and in the 70s, uh, back in the day, uh, a lot of police officers went in and just killed prisoners. Uh -huh. so, yeah. So it's, it's this uh, growing knowledge that you, you get, you grow wiser, your head is filled with a bunch of things 
and you have to put it out there, uh, either creatively writing, through painting, through drawing, in any way that you can, through self-meditation, even through your, your tedious job, whatever it is that person is doing, you're meditating on an idea and a reflection of yourself, and it's important to get that out there. So my art has changed in that I am okay with being vulnerable. Okay. And yeah, that's right. Well, I, I I love that. I was like, I and again, I connect with you, uh, in, especially in the art space. I was like, beyond just being friends from the past, it's like, uh, uh, like I connect with you with a like, like definitely feel that like, uh, um, over time, I think it, it is that kind of like maturing and uh, and getting a kind of a deeper, deeper knowledge and and wanting to uh, wanting to I guess communicate on that. You know, it's like a. Uh, bring that more to the forefront and I, I love how you said that uh being vulnerable i think that's just so important for for people uh for us to connect is is to be vulnerable so what is like like what is your like what is your process then like uh, it's, you kind of say like it, it's kind of like meditating on some of these deep deeper things like kind of like sure. you mentioned like say like attica and saying like this this horrible things that happen in, in this prison and uh is that where you start or is it like uh like or is it just some days where it's just like no oh, i'm just gonna start with a circle and just go with it or whatever. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm so, I'm so blind to the art space until uh, recently. I, I recently got into to comics and was able to get to be a bestseller and things, but my, all my comics tend to be like focused around like, you know, the narrative it's a focus around the story. Sure. So I'm so oh, fascinated yeah. by uh, like uh, art is just such a different style of, uh, of a narrative really. It is. Uh, it, it is in that it's very gestural. You're, you're. I'm putting a lot of emotions into it. I stopped doing uh, still lifes and landscapes in college, and okay. uh, I was over it. Uh, and then I moved more to expressionism uh, and more gestural things. So now my process today um, would be: I have an image of something that I want to create, and I can do that. Um, but there are layers now, right? I'm putting. I don't know where the can I'm putting layers on top of things. And uh, so all of those ideas go into the painting. You're, you know, I see it as how I write a poem. I'm writing a poem and I am, um, I'm casting a spell. Okay. When I am painting a painting or drawing a drawing, I'm creating a sigil. I'm putting the energy into the universe, the ether. I okay. am taking the idea and showing to you as a reflection of yourself. You know, if you, if someone, if the audience or the viewer sees it and takes what they can from it, beautiful, great. But I'm, I'm really just here trying to uh, translate, I guess, the universe as, uh, as cheesy oh. as it is. No, I, I don't think that's cheesy. I, I'm a I'm a very spiritual person uh, myself, and and, uh, and I just I do believe in and putting out goodness into the world and things are uh, and and being a part of that. And it's like being connected. Uh, and uh, I what I think is really cool though is is uh, uh, something I'm pulling from this is that that the process is actually incredibly important. Like something in writing world, I guess is uh, for me is like like you know, the writing process is important, but it's ultimately all about that final product. Like when you get that final right. product out there, that's all that anyone ever sees. And, uh, and it is kind of similar in art world, but what I'm finding is re that's really cool from what you, you just told me is that, that the layers underneath are just as important and they're actually still a part of that. It's like a living piece almost. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the one right here that you can see, um, there's there's a lot there's a lot of layers um and it's a lot of scribbling i put a lot of words into it too um the layers you're there's that symbolism of you're adding and you're taking away right uh -huh. you're create something and then you're going to take it away does it take away the meaning or the the purpose of what you were trying to do no it it shifts the energy if that makes sense. So, well, it does make sense. It's kind of like energy can't be created or destroyed, right? It's like, it's right. still there. It's just, uh, it's just different. And so it's, it's that idea, like, like the piece is still there. All the underlying layers are still there. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just shifted what you want, uh, want to be seen. I, I, I think it's, I think there's something very profound about that. And for anyone uh, that's tuning in now, by the way, uh, uh, Ken Brassad, fantastic artist, uh, check out his links in the description below. He's also a wonderful teacher as well and teaches art. And so, um, 
Uh, so definitely check out his works down below and uh, don't mind his cheesiness. Uh, no, I'm, just joking. I'm a and, very uh, serious person. Yes, I can tell. And, uh, and, Dark uh, and mysterious. But, you know, I've always found you, Kevin, to be you. You are you are you have wonderful humor, and you also have wonderful depth. And I always thought you you to be a wonderfully well-rounded person. So check out his works down below Thanks, if you get a chance if you're watching this. Um, so uh, Kevin, like, what prompted you to to uh, to like move out to the Bronx, uh, and uh, and what was that experience like? Because it's like going from uh, Colorado Springs uh, to it's a medium-sized uh, city to to like. New York city, you know, it's like Bronx or whatever. It's like that, that to me, I, I can't even imagine. I haven't had a chance to visit yet. and I would love to, uh, I'm just blown away. So what prompted that decision and what, what was that experience? Well, I was, I was nine and I was like, Hey parents, I'm sick of this gross town. I'm moving to Colorado. And they were like, okay, cool. Go do that. So I took my suitcase and I traveled down the road and a bear picked me up as a hitchhiker. And then I made my way to Colorado and I'm here now to paint pictures for everybody. Nice. Okay. And so, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, like, uh, um, I hear everything on this show. So by this point, I'm just like, all right, cool. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> uh, I can just make up my own lore right now. Um, <laughs> <Literally. yeah. laughs> no, my parents, they wanted me to have a better uh, education, a better environment to grow up in. So, that led us to Colorado. At the time, it was uh, inexpensive for people to move to Colorado. Uh, I had an aunt and uncle that were that were out here. We came to visit. We checked it out. My dad liked it, so we just packed up and, and moved. Um, with that, oh, by though, the way, sorry, sorry. Andrew Hints uh, is is throwing out there. Andrew Hints Productions. Uh, teachers always make the uh, the best creative types. We all sir, sure, sure do. <laughs> Andrew was also a teacher. Andrew is a wonderfully supportive uh, author, uh, a very kind person as well. So Andrew, it's always great to have you. So sorry, Kevin. Go on. So so. No, no. Uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah. Right. I, no, I, mean, so, I wasn't listening. I'm just talking. We'll, we'll watch it later and figure out. You know? This is being recorded, right? We can just go back yeah, and rewind it, it later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, no, so, yeah, so you're talking about when, when you all, uh, your, your parents want you to have a, kind of a different place uh, uh, for living and moving out to Colorado Springs. Yeah, right. So, but with that move, it was also that shift of identity. I was going to Catholic school in New York, and then I moved out here and I went to public school. So, um, not only was there a shift in um, like a personal identity with people and the kids around me. It was also a shift. <laughs> Kevin's in... Kevin's choosing his words carefully. He's like, I had to hang out with this with this jack right here. You know, it's like a <laughs> UK. <laughs> yeah, UK I was like, much I... later when life was a lot better. <laughs> That's where you, when you came in. Um, the... <laughs> no, it was a uh, like there was this whole dynamic that had to change within me very quick at the age of nine or 10. Um, I didn't have a West Indian friends. I didn't have my West Indian cousins. I didn't have a Puerto Rican neighbor that I can go, uh, you know, chew bubblegum with, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like I, there was a, there was a very huge mental shift that had to happen for me. And I, that's where that communication comes from again, that, that, that um, deep seated, uh, want and need for me to be heard because even as a child being a child inherently you're not heard um and then you're you're thrown into a whole new world you have no, no idea about so going from new york to colorado major shift uh made me uh the man i am today <laughs> unfortunately no, i'm just joking. <laughs> like honestly Kevin, like, again like you're uh, this is such a boon to my soul to get to talk to you because i i haven't seen you in ages and so uh oh, no. like this is great all right this so in great. your uh you, you kind of touched on it here a little bit with um you know talking about some of that diversity kind of piece too it's like a right it's like a new york i mean that's like you got you got everyone from everywhere in, in new york and then uh and then you come out to uh colorado springs which is like uh, moderately diverse, but it's like, you, you know, you don't always have it as, as much. And like, so in your bio, you kind of mentioned being an activist and that seeing the lack of uh, brown art moved you. And so uh, like, uh, tell us a bit about a uh, kind of activism through art and, uh, and kind of how you think, uh, how do you think we as human beings can connect better through art? Art is a way to start a conversation. 
right? Um, comedians are great observers and they're great storytellers because they can pull something out of regular life that's not funny and have you look at it in a completely different way. Uh-huh. That's what a comedian does. And, and you'll laugh about it. And sometimes people don't think about why they're laughing about it. Um, and that causes some frustration. Hence, you know, Dave Chappelle and why he left the, yeah. the show. With artists, artists are either painting exactly what they see or how they feel for you to look at it. Um, your writers are doing the same thing. Um, Jean Paul Sartre. His, yeah, I, was like, I definitely, I definitely don't paint how I feel as as, as a writer. It's it's always it, it'll always look kind of like ugly or whatever. It's like trying <laughs> to paint or whatever. I was just like, scribbling. I am, no. uh, well, <laughs> just like, like I said, there's words. There's words on almost everything that I paint. Anyway, so uh, like you're 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 painting with words and you're phrasing them in a specific yeah. way, right? You're painting an idea uh, visually by tattooing dead trees um <laughs> I, uh, uh, i'm flowers and putting them on the wall you know like uh so when you want to be an activist when you want an idea to be portrayed uh it's important because you want your audience to ultimately feel something whatever you're doing writing uh composing music painting uh you want your audience to feel something now with a visual artist uh you're right in their face you are either gonna paint a hanged man and show the blood and gore of everything that it is and then preach love because that's what you believe and you're painting all the bad things because that's what you but what you feel in your heart is completely different it's a way for you to um uh, filter to sieve out all of the all of the bad energy so that you have enough warmth to give to the world and there are messages there are messages in those things um i used to say bob dylan was satire in a lot of his songs you know uh-huh. um because he's saying these things but you don't believe it it's like romeo and juliet when it's like a 14 year old and a 16 year old that's not a love story. That's a warning. You know, <laughs> we, we have, well, it's to... like written what like Renaissance or whatever. So it's like, they were like old people by back then. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they bathed like once and they were like, Oh, Whoa. Okay. You got to retire now. Yeah. Yeah. They were, <laughs> you're right. They were probably like super old. <laughs> so, so, uh, so uh, I guess like, like how can we better, like, uh, like how can we be better? I think about like, uh, uh, connecting through art and and uh and being uh one of the things that i thought was profound you you uh you kind of uh have been working in the colorado springs art scene you were you uh one of the things i think that i thought was kind of profound was like being conscious about the art that we uh surround ourselves with so how do we go about doing that do you or how would you say is is a way we could go about doing that be present um go see art, go talk to the artists, go be part of a community that you're not comfortable with, go hang out with people, hear stories, interview people, get to know anybody's struggle. If you can look outside of yourself, you won't necessarily understand what they're going through, but you'll know. Okay. And that gives you a a consciousness to be compassionate, to be empathetic. If you want to see art, follow your favorite artists. They could be very famous or they could be very local. I suggest going local because local (laughs) artists are the ones who are speaking for your community specifically. Um, They're in your town. They're creating for you and your town because you are the audience. Artists have a hard time finding their audience but when that audience shows their appreciation for that creative person, you're it's it's not an ego boost. It's a like soul well, manifestation. It's, it's, it's definitely validating, and uh, and yeah. and 
it, like because uh, like you said earlier being vulnerable as an artist uh that's a huge thing and uh and that's when you get your best art out there uh, as a writer as well it's like when you're actually vulnerable and you say i like this and i'm just going to share this with the world and uh a lot of a lot of people will take jabs at it and things and it's hard to hear that but it's about those those people that that got something out of it and uh and you you feel very connected in that in that moment and so i'm curious from you what was it like uh you've had your art uh exhibited before and things uh, with the public and so what was it what was that feeling when you actually got to see people stepping out there and uh and uh taking it in and like like what what, what were you feeling in that uh lots of feelings <laughs> very uh lots of feelings i feel a lot of feelings anyway so when you see people taking pictures in front of your paintings or knowing that it represents a community and a voice not just your own um was soul fulfilling it was absolutely uh i didn't think it was real i, I like i was sitting back and taking pictures of people taking pictures of my pictures um so would you would you, would you say it was surreal which is a type of art <laughs> uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Let's I, let's be <laughs> serious, Dolly. <laughs> okay. uh, um, right. Uh, yeah. No. So it was. It was. It was very surreal. It was. It was um, because it was real life, and again, it was this dream that I didn't think was going to happen, and then it was happening in front of me, and I didn't wish for it. I just did it. And I, I have to agree, uh, just just to your um, your description there, I have to agree with Andrea here. Wow, goosebumps. Honestly, it's like, especially, it's it's, it's fun to, uh, I'm having, a, I, I have a great deal of joy uh, experiencing art uh, through through your eyes, Kevin, as a creator of art, because uh, uh, I've become an artist uh, through the weird, like, ways of my life. But I'm like, I do the art that yeah. no one's ever going to see. I do all, the, like, the cheap layout and the uh, rough sketch and character design of, of stuff and no one's ever going to see important. it and so but well I, I i love it because i'm passionate about comics but uh it's i get very uh, a very similar feeling when people get to read the work and and uh, yeah. and it moves them and uh but it's really fun to to hear that and experience that through through the eyes of an artist and so um let's uh Let's jump over really quick uh, just to uh, uh, the strangeness of art world for a second. And then we're going to get into uh, looking at some of your art and uh, and hearing. I, I, I'm curious to hear some of your insights uh, also about art world as well. But uh, art world is sometimes a strange world to exist in. Uh, I, I, for myself, I had a, I had to be a snowflake at one point. I used to act and I, I had to be a snowflake for like an hour once. And it's it's art. So you just have to kind of fly around the room. It's a snowflake. It was fun. Uh, and so like what has been one of your strangest experiences in art world or one of the most uh, uh, out there things you've ever had to do to promote your own work? I haven't gotten there yet. Because I have some things planned, um, and they're pretty strange. But uh, there, there's a few things that I want to do. So far, it's been pretty easy. Like, uh, I don't know, I'm going to share on Facebook or, or Instagram or have someone follow and someone else does a thing. Like, that's that's pretty simple. That's pretty easy. Um, but I've got ideas of, like, I don't know, putting up a banner outside someplace renting out the park for an afternoon and doing something cool. Uh, I have an art collective. I'm part, sorry. I want to, I want to see how you're renting out the park and what you do with that. I, I want to see an art, like a, uh, like ultimate Frisbee competition in a park. Or something oh like my that. God. That'd be so cool. <laughs> throwing around like a, uh, like uh, throwing uh, art uh, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what the emotion is that we were going to try and get across for that, but <laughs> something, something, <laughs> anything, just, just, Still look at art. Um, no, I'm part of an art collective. Uh, we call ourselves Kettle Black Art uh -huh. Collective. And we've got a number of ideas and plans that we want to do. One of them is um, uh, giving art uh, giving art supplies and sort of like mini lessons to some of the homeless teenagers down the street. Oh, cool. And that would be interesting and good for them. Uh, just so that they have like a pen and a pad in their hands to kind of like get out of whatever headspace that they're in. Um, another thing too would be to like just go talk to other homeless folks and make sure that they're doing okay. And you know, we we want to engage as much as we can within the community because we are 
voices for the community, whether we're writers or creators, what what have you. Um, we we want to know that everyone's doing okay. You know, we're not, <laughs> we just want to know everyone's okay, and we're not. We're in a weird time. We're in a very weird time. We're in a weird <laughs> yeah, time. I, yes, I was like definitely. I was like, well, I was like, I, I just think is uh, so. What made uh, like it sounds like a uh, one of the big passions for for the art collective is uh, it sounds like the homeless community. What what prompted that, and what what do you think? How do you think uh, art helps kind of heal um, uh, some of the I guess society's woes? Being heard, communicating, um, the validation of self. It all comes back to those those intrinsic human things that we are in dire need of, you know. Um, when was the last time someone held you, Josh? You know? So, like, but that's, don't point it out, okay? Okay, yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, like, realistically, like, that's, that's the feeling that you want. You want to know that someone is yeah. there for you, you know? Yeah. You want to know you want to know that you're heard that that child inside of you is heard so it's important for every voice to be heard no matter who they are whatever identity you're struggling with or whatever course of action you're taking for your identity you want to be heard everybody wants to be heard some people need to shut up but like a lot we just want to be heard kevin's again yeah. talking about talking about me here so I, no. he's choosing his words carefully so don't boot him off the show <laughs> <laughs> some people need to shut up some over people. here and so <laughs> but so kevin uh, i was like uh i i really do think that that is a beautiful thing and uh and i do appreciate that and, uh for forever and out there always uh uh we love to hear you so by all means like uh if you want to jump in the live chat we love honoring you uh and you can always share your experiences on this show uh we uh diabolic shrimp is also very much about community and and uh and actually hearing people and looking at people and so uh so uh just one last thing then and then we're gonna get it i really want to show off your art and so uh because i love your art and so so what um like going in you you, you teach and and it sounds like you have great outreach as well so what is uh like a great way for someone who's never really i guess accessed art or or been a part of the art world uh like someone like me say i i never took art growing up and uh and i didn't i had no like art knowledge other than i i used to act right and uh and yeah. uh but and that is art but it's like yeah. it, i never had any like visual kind of painting kind of art so for someone for that visual space for art what would you what would be your uh suggestion for how to break into art world or or what would be a great what would be a good like first step do what you love um ultimately um get uh if you find your medium if you like drawing draw if you like painting paint whether it be acrylic or oil you're using pastels just start doing it just just do it there's no no one stopping you you should not feel ashamed for not being good because everyone has to start someplace um you are meditating on yourself in everything that you do and it's a great way to do that so there should be no shame there should be no uh gatekeeping if it were for anything you do as a creative um in the art world the industry that is the art like i again have no idea how you get into that if you can let me know that would be fantastic yeah, um, yeah well definitely well it's like well that's kind of the fascinating thing about creative world right it's like sometimes you just have to start doing it and then sometimes it clicks and sometimes it, it doesn't and maybe if it doesn't then come back to it in a little bit and it yeah, eventually will a and catch a, so catch oh, well let's, let's let's take a look i i i definitely want to make sure we have time to uh to look through your art and then we're going to play a little game of kevin reacts where i'm going to make cool. kevin react to other people's art uh and tell us what they were thinking even though he's never met them and so but uh he's our expert and so i gotta understand art because i'm not i'm definitely not a visual artist and so uh yeah this one what do you think no uh so a little, so there's <laughs> this is uh, great everyone should go out and buy this <laughs> yes this he's, he's required to a little uh, um, shameless self-promotion here and so are... <laughs> oh so so i wanted to throw this in i wanted to throw this in here okay uh, this is not art uh definitely not so there's uh there's there's me uh in my juicy fruit shirt this is me in high school people never is that get picture photos. back there so yes and so uh, uh i think so and oh so, my god oh I my god so. but uh so so this is high school this is the journalism room right and so uh so this is this is me uh 
uh, we publish, uh, this is where Kevin and I got our start, right? In art world. So Kevin and I, uh, we, uh, we, we, we got our start publishing here. Look at those computers, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm aging us top right now. Line. And so top those, they were fancy. And were so great. we can make them talk back then. And so, uh, <laughs> but this is where we published our very first comic. This is actually the very first comic I've ever published before. And so Kevin and I published through the newspaper there. So, uh, fun. I just threw that in there for fun. So here we go, Kevin, um, this oh. one, uh, you entitled it, I believe, um, uh, self portrait. So tell us, uh, just tell us a little bit about this and like just the creation. I, I, this is my favorite personal favorite of yours but uh you. uh like tell tell us a little bit about this and like why you you uh like why you painted in the first place tell us a little bit about the process um yeah no i i went into it starting uh to paint a self-portrait and uh i got bored of it very very quickly i took like i said earlier i i'm i'm done painting landscapes and and still lifes and and things like that and uh, and it's good practice to kind of get back into it. And I was in a, I was in a, uh, like a, like a block. So I wanted to do a, uh, self-portrait, but it turned into that because I was playing with more technique that I've been working on with other paintings. Um, but looking at it, it's very empty shell of a, of a portrait. Um, and there's words in there if you can read them. Yeah. So, so we got some, uh, I, I'm not sure if our audience can associate it. We have some words here and it says, if I can't have you, you might. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't read that on, on, on air. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll read it. It's, it's right uh... here, actually. It says, uh, if I can't have you, you might as well be happy. So, oh, and... there we go. Okay. And so I was like, I was like, I can't quite. And so if I can't have you, you might, might as well be happy. So like, all right. So, and I see that. I also see like, a, uh, I see like a possession down here and so yeah why why those words because uh, i do know um and now that i'm kind of more in the visual space uh i'm working on comics these days uh yeah. there's so much thought that goes into any word you throw into art because any word you throw in there it's covering up the art and so from a comic perspective i i'm very careful about how i choose my words because i don't want to cover up the visual piece so because uh those words are important and you only have so much space and so why did you choose those words Awesome. I'm, gl I'm glad you like you. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing that. Um, <laughs> possession. I am playing with this idea for years that we are, this is how I described it the other day during a critique. It's, um, it's that we are, we are haunted houses. Okay. We, Especially me. <laughs> we, we as people, we are, we are haunted by ghosts of, of memories of people of ideas, things we've moved past, things we're, that are coming back. Um, and so pe people that we, that make us angry, think people that, that we love, we are, we are possessed. We are haunted. We are possessed. Right. Um, and those words on the sides, uh, if I can't have you, you might as well be happy because those words play in to having someone. Do you have someone? Is someone in your possession? Are you going to be happy without me? And what does that make me if I can't make you happy? There's it's a whole those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven words says way too much than it should, you know? Well, definitely. I was like, and uh I just love that that, that you know, possessed. We're kind of possessed by uh uh, some of the past, I definitely know there's been times in my life where, where you are haunted by some of these, like uh, these ghosts and it's not even ghosts of your own making necessarily, but you sometimes, it's like, you have all the power to let them stay there. I think that's, I think that's so deep. I, I also think it's actually a beautiful, uh, self portrait. You actually captured your, uh, your Voldemort nose there really well. And so, uh, no, it's <laughs> Kevin, I was like, so Kevin, this one, uh, um, uh, I actually don't know uh, the name of this one. Sorry. I meant to write them down, but I didn't. Uh, so, so tell us a little bit about this one. I also love, uh, just pointing this out to our audience for anyone that can't see as well. These are actually actual objects that are attached to a, uh, so I, I love things like this where it's like, 2d 3d and i'm curious like was that a conscious choice or was that just like oh i'm just gonna stick something here or or what what was your kind of process in that um a lot so naturally what, what i do now is my brain 
puts things into a composition and has depth. And I, I kind of naturally do it through gesture and where my arms are going. Right. <clears throat> I'm not flailing all about like a, like a crazy person, only when I'm crying. Um, but yes, those are actual flowers and they're dead now. Um, and I am like use an embroidery needle and um, some, some string. And I, uh, sewed them to the the canvas itself yeah um this one is called amp and why amp don't worry about it okay <laughs> so it's part of the mystery i'm i'm gonna figure this out uh as soon as, as, soon as we're no longer live i'm going to uh I'll I'll write a book get you i'm I'll going to you, you, you should you should and so okay so so here's our next one of of uh kevin Prasad's art so kevin tell, tell us a bit about this one um, this, this one, one is... has tons of words, by the way, and I, I'm not sure how well our audience can see how big your screen is, uh, but we have we have quite a few in there, and uh, some of them are are deep, some of them are a bit edgy, and so I'm I'm curious, like what was the, what was the process in that as well? <clears throat> uh, this one is uh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> I have to choose my words. So as an artist, I have to choose my words very specific. To, to what what I'm describing in the art because I don't want to like you know no oh, well I just scribble it on stuff I just put in scribbles you know <laughs> that's well, that's not. literally the description of my entire book <laughs> <laughs> it's just nothing it's just scribbles <laughs> I just <laughs> um no no it's a uh, it, this is a full on uh, meditative uh, piece it's it's a little bit of the past and a lot of the future. Um, and again, playing with the idea of of depth and composition is just a thing you naturally do as a visual artist. Um, and the words the words all play like uh, "baby shoes for sale, never worn." Um, yeah, that, that is, just hits uh, you like oh, that's hits you right in the gut. That's Hemingway, um, but the way it's worded there on on the canvas that is uh, that's uh, from a song. By the, by the band Idols. Um, tension is written multiple times. Um, it's, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of things. Well, so, so I'm curious, like, uh, cause I, what I think is kind of cool about this is like, you said it's kind of a meditation. And so yeah. did you, did you start anywhere specific in here? Or did you just kind of like, did you just kind of like rotate? Like, or is it kind of one of those things where like, rotating through here I was emotionally and then here I am now and then coming back to it like so we can sometimes spiral as people like that and say so we kind of circle things and so or is it like where you was it I, I'm feeling this here and then I'm going to jump over here and I'm just going to do this now uh what, what was kind of your process in that oh I'm I'm, I'm jumping around it's it, it's telling a story in multiple spots it's not one flow it's not you that's what your eyes do because it's what i'm doing as a visual artist i'm very conscious of that but my ideas are telling a story in multiple spots um so i, I couldn't tell you where i started um, and it, it it was it your intent to have because it's like you're telling multiple stories and i can see that like when i look around i'm like you know, it's like, uh, and I know, you, like you said, you're conscious of this. And I love that because uh, a lot of people don't necessarily think about that, like all the thought that goes into a piece. And yes, and uh, yeah. there's so much that goes into every every piece of this. And uh, and so like, uh, like, you know, you can see it's like you, you're, you're, you're always thinking about where people are looking. But uh, is it your intent to like have them focus in on different sections and travel? Or do you want them to eventually kind of see like a bigger picture here? Is that like I'm, I'm curious? No, I, um, I'll never tell anybody what they should pick out of it. Um, uh -huh. I can give an analysis, but it's not my intent yeah. to, to tell you what you see or what you're pulling out. Because again, art is, should be, uh, what you see. It's a reflection of you, okay. the viewer. Um, but yeah, there's going to be parts of it. You're going to look at it and you're going to be like, okay, I, things resonate right here. And this resonates with me right here. It's, but, but yeah, I don't want to delve too much into this one because it is a very in-depth story. And it's uh, me, me putting the end. This is the, uh, these, this is the uh, credits to the story. Interesting. Okay. 
And so, and our last one of, of, of your pieces that we have um, to show off today, right? Uh, it says, uh, this is this is not an exit. Uh, it has broken written in there. Um, uh, I can't quite see like some of these other ones. I was actually curious about some of the other writings. And then we got yeah. this like kind of a, kind of this uh, black smear across this uh, red door with the lighting behind it. And so tell us about some of your, uh, some of the choices in, in this one. Cause like I said, everything here is always like, a, I know it's like, a lot of it's a conscious choice. And, and so, uh, so what, what was it that, that made you want to do the lighting this way? What was it that made you want to do a bit of photography and have an actual, uh, physical piece? The, the photography was actually, this, this was shot by, uh, Shasta, Shasta Lowey. Um, and, uh, it, it's the, the piece itself is the door, the door and me, um, painting on it. Uh, uh -huh. it is, it is a broken door uh letting you know it, it actually you. represents every door in my house <laughs> yeah it, it, yeah <laughs> yeah it's not an exit you're just going to a new room you know what i mean like it's just here it is again like it's just another square um we're underneath the uh the the uh, the doorknob hole there uh the knob hole uh it says uh the grass is the grass is not always greener uh-huh but i've got it scratched off um and those little those little words that you see around it's all it all it says is, is broken broken so i want you to look at it where does the where does the door go where is it leading to is it is it shutting you in what is it doing it's a broken door but what what is it oh man um yeah uh is it is the, the home broken is the door broken Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I was like, well, and I, I, and the, the thing, Kevin, I was like, I love, I, I know it's hard to, to walk through some of your own art and, uh, and I just love, uh, I've definitely feeling and connecting with you on, uh, you. on so many of your pieces and, uh, uh, you, you have, you have, you have a beautiful heart. You have a beautiful heart for people. And, uh, Thanks. I also love how, I know you've been kind of uh, careful to analyze your own art, and I understand that yeah, I, from yeah. from an from an artist as well, because it's like it is about how it's received and uh, and letting the receiver figure their own thing out through it, and uh, and I think that's also a beautiful thing. A lot of art is a reflection, and so all right. Well, let's uh let's have a let's have a, a little bit of goofy fun here, okay? Like uh, uh I, this is definitely not uh you mentioned it before a critique, right? And so I'm not yeah. uh I never want to try and critique anyone's work. When I write reviews of people's work, you'll notice I never do star ratings unless I have to, like on like Amazon or something, because I don't sure. believe in that. I believe in uh just trying to share what what their piece was, not give my judgment on it or anything, and so. This is not a critique or a judgment. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of Kevin reacts though. So I pulled art from all over the world from from the from the past. A lot of these are, are famous pieces, and so uh, so uh, Kevin's uh, Kevin's our art expert. And so Kevin, your your job your job is to tell us what that artist was thinking, even though you've never met that artist. <laughs> and so and I know it's an impossible job because I know you don't know what that artist is thinking, and it, oh, it's an impossible cool. thing. Is, but it's required. Hilarious. And this so is going to be great. You're 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 forced <laughs> to tell this. us what this artist was thinking, okay? Because I have to know. And so so Kevin is is the only artist in the world that I, that that I have on the, on the show on the moment. And so uh so <laughs> so he has to tell me what all this art is. So here you go, Kevin. What was the artist thinking? Like why this? <laughs> okay, so so you know when you open a box of Legos and there's a silica packet, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's going on is that they took the silica packet and they put it in their pants and, uh, there was a, an oopsie, uh, a little, uh, gas expulsion and, uh, it, it didn't have a smell. And so what the painter was doing was trying to paint that. <laughs> I, I think that is actually an accurate, uh, look of, uh, uh, gas. I know, I know. So, all I right. Know. So jumping on next. Uh, so why why this why if you were the artist uh painting this uh why 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 the positioning why the lighting why do you think well for one you can't see the tumor she's got under her her headband ooh, so ooh, it's yeah. lit in a way that you you kind of you let go of of someone's um <laughs> we're, we're moving on from that one kevin <laughs> uh you, you let go of someone's uh uh deformation if it were and see them in a perfect way oh, all right next guys. up all right, right. So, so why do you think the artist why do you think the artist uh wanted to paint scowling people um 
because they were not happy. <laughs> there we go. Uh, right. <laughs> full quote from Kevin Brassad, not happy. And so why in our, like, like, what was the conscious decision behind an apple in front of the face? No hands on it. Uh, this this painting right here has always creeped me out, to be honest. <laughs> it's a, Yeah. It reminds me of that, that, what is it, a Robin Williams movie? Or... <laughs> You're talking about uh, Pierce Brosnan and Thomas Crown Affair? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> it? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, okay. So w- this is an apple of my eye, clearly by um, uh, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> All right. I'm curious. Why? Uh, like, why are the clocks melting? Because they were bathing in the sun, Joshua. Come on. Okay, no, it's just, it's hot. It's like, it's, they're uh, hot. Okay? So keep your Leave clocks out of the sun, uh, according to, to Kevin Prasad. So uh, yeah. uh, a, a little bit of a classic here. Uh, I'm yeah, curious, like, why do you think, uh, why do you think the artist here? I, I'm actually really curious to see if, the, uh, uh, if this artist is actually standing out there on a boat or if it was just kind of from their imagination. Uh, but but why do you think they drew uh, uh, Mount Fuji so tiny? Um, because Mount Fuji gets its energy from the waves, so ah. it wasn't it wasn't that big because there was a tsunami happening. Therefore, it was very minuscule. And the 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 guy draw, drawing it, he was like, "Yep, uh, water." <laughs> I'll say art analysis, according to Kevin Versace. No, it's like, so, so uh, fun fact, by the way, I know Kevin, uh, your, your local artist, Colorado Springs, uh, uh, Colorado Springs, sister city is actually on the slopes of uh, Mount Fuji there. And really? so that's why uh, downtown Colorado Springs, you'll find, uh, you'll find like one of those uh, uh, spirit arches or whatever that, that you find right. at uh, the location of a village or at the entrance to a village. And uh, they actually uh, gifted that to, to Colorado Springs. Fun little fact. So that's pretty uh, cool. back to this. Um, what do you think? What do you think the artist was going for here? <laughs> it's like again, I know this is not an art analysis, and I'm forcing Kevin to do this. Poor Kevin's like in the hot seat here. Kevin, tell us what the artist was thinking. I don't think you want me to say. All right, we yeah, I don't. <laughs> Moving on. Why? Why food? Why are Why are people p- taking pictures of food even even in medieval times when when this was painted or this was uh, I think Renaissance. I really uh, um I can. <sighs> For the record, I can give you real answers for every one of these. Um, but my answer is that they wanted their pigs to be jealous and, you know, they were too fat. So they wanted to be like, hey, get skinny pigs. And then they were like, oh, I'm going to put all the food over here. And the pigs were like, I don't. Why would you do that to me? And then <laughs> they'll get the pig one uh, uh, in the next um, uh, picture there. And so uh, for her, like, uh, why do you think uh, just the coloration here, actually, for some reason, they kind of made her look like snow white, snow white in a way. It's kind of like that golden and, and blue. But uh, what's the deal with the window in this one, Kevin? I was like, Kevin did not paint these, by the way, for some people I know that just tuned in. I'm forcing him to sit in the hot seat and give us his professional art analysis. Uh, so so why do you think uh, what's going on with that window with the weird little plant? <clears throat> it's the perception of putting books on a shelf uh there are plants and there's trees there what are you doing with your mind you got to take the novels that you've created out of your brain and put them back into the table of wallflowers i I was like poor kevin i was like i put you in the hot seat here and uh kevin here if you if you just tuned in uh watch the earlier portions of of this video he had the most deep answers like really heartfelt touching answers and then we uh, then i throw him in the hot seat and make him uh make him just (laughs) give the uh like Uh. all right absurdism like why like what do you think goes through the mind of someone absurd of you actually talked a little bit earlier about uh uh emotion uh do you think that's what's going on here or or, uh did they just love rubik's cubes or what oh yeah no um i for i love absurdism i'm a huge fan of albert camus anyway um this guy i'm not gonna name names i'm not gonna name names this guy okay was sick and tired of the art industry screwing him over so he decided to just do whatever he wanted and he stole it from a lady named ilma off clint now i can go and rant all day about how Hilma off Clint should be famous, more famous than she should be, but that's not happening. You want to know why? Because this guy, his name Kandinsky, decided to do stuff, and he, he did not give credit to this Hilma, and I am interested. Interesting. All right, all right. And uh, 
uh, this one, uh, I think was the very first like anti-smoking ad possibly. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, and so sorry, we're running a long time. That's why I'm zipping on through. Okay. Yeah. This yeah, one, yeah of course yeah. is the, yeah. uh, the, uh, test the emergency broadcast system by, yes. by, uh, what yep. is that Monet? And, uh, yep. and, uh, of course uh, a little bit of scatter, but we do have to get to our, our, our very, uh, last one, uh, Pennywise on break, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, I do like this one actually, even though clowns, clowns. really creep me out. And so I think it's kind of a, a kind of fun one. So this very last one is, uh, it's, I've seen, this is a whole style of art right here, Kevin. And I do have to know from an artist's perspective, why, why are people licking people's eyes? <laughs> um, to have better drug trips, Joshua. Duh. <laughs> I think they might be on uh, drugs eventually. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's bring it back to just you and me here. Didn't get okay. the screen. Get, but thank you. So thank you, Kevin, for being willing to play ball. You poor soul. Uh, uh, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin was my, is is my first uh, person that was totally focused to visual art uh, on the show. So I forced him to uh, to do a little art walk with me. <laughs> poor human being. And so Kevin. I I, you know, you, 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 you were, you were one of my best friends, uh, growing up, going through, going through high school together. You're a fantastic artist. You, uh, you have a good heart for people. And so, uh, Kevin, uh, we, we have all Kevin's, uh, uh, works and links down in the description below. He's a teacher as well. And so check those out if, if you, if you want to, uh, uh, check out his work and support him, but Kevin, how else can we support you, um, as a community? Uh, Go out to First Fridays. <clears throat> first Fridays are important for all artists. All artists. Uh, first Friday is the first Friday of every month. You go, you check them out. It's typically the night that artists will have their studio doors open. Um, they will, galleries will be open for the public. Interesting. I, I didn't even know that. And, yeah, so you go and you um, have a conversation with an artist. Go talk and converse about ideas, about politics, about... Um, what it is to be alive and awake and conscious being walking down the street, you know, like you go do those things. Go <laughs> for be, me. It's like half conscious half the time. Yeah, I'm so. just sleeping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like just go do those things to, to, to better represent the community. Go be part of the community. So nice. I was like, I like that answer. Well, well, Kevin, uh, it was such a blast to have you on. Uh, I, I, I loved Thank getting you. to see you again and, uh, and yeah. also getting just uh, here. I, I've always known you to be a fantastic artist. It was fun to, to hear um, just uh, your analysis of your own work a little bit, even though it wasn't a, like a full announcement, but just getting to hear some of your perspectives on art and people. Uh, just thank you so much for being on Diabolic Shrimp. Thank you for having me, Josh. It's so good seeing you. All right. Thank well, you. I'll send you back down below for a second. Hang out. I'll, I'll, I'll be back to you in a second. So, uh, uh, that was Kevin Prasad. Again, his art is, uh, down, uh, uh his links. There's several of them down in, in the description below. Uh, he has a heart for local artists. So definitely get out there and check out your local artists and your community. Um, thank you for being part of the diabolic shrimp community. Uh, for those of you that showed up in the live chat, uh, thank you for showing up and, uh, participating. Uh, if you're watching this later on, um, you're more than welcome to, to leave some comments for Kevin. I'm always happy to, to share those with him. Uh, but uh, thanks for spending your afternoon with us here on Diabolic Shrimp. Uh, we'll, we'll be back next week with uh, 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 someone that's a motivational speaker, actually. And so so uh, thank you for, for spending your afternoon with us. Uh, this has been another Diabolic Shrimp. Have a good night.